Yeah, hello, scrappers. Been a busy day. Run my wife down to get a blood test done. A while back, they said that her white cells were a little high. Yeah, sometimes you get these things they don't want to come off, so I pry them off my little pry bar. We've got a little nut on there. Sometimes it's quarter inch. Sometimes it's three sixteenths. Not sure how good that ratchet is. Looks like this one's quarter inch. Probably need some cleaning. Not ratcheting it very well. Probably haven't been used much. Okay, I'll just get my uh, quarter inch nut driver. times which this one here is we've got an aluminum plate right here a couple, couple long Phillips head screws right there that one's kind of playing hard to get but we got it Hope that fan's not making too much background noise. It's humid out here, so. Now we got. Oh, let's see. A couple quarter inch bolts back here. Yeah, I don't know if that rain's going to make it down here or not, doesn't it? Looks like I'm just kind of staying up there in the northwest. That's okay by me. Well, I just wanted to have a yard sale, so we've been working on getting that set up. I've been moving stuff around and setting up tables. Yeah, I cut the plugs off. Once you get to this point, cut the hose. strips, one or the other, or both, and uh, a little motor should have some copper in it. I'm trying to see just how that connects on there. I guess we've got to pry this tab up here, break it off like that. Not 
toss that over there for right now. Get a little bit of flame popper. A couple quarter inch bolts right there. Yeah, you new guys, if you don't have the quarter inch drill, you can use a nut driver. You can use a wrench, socket wrench, whatever. They'll all get the job done. And this metal piece here is glued on. Some are glued with a lot of glue and take a lot of force to get them off. This one wasn't too bad. And a lot of times what I'll do, I'll try to flatten it out where they stack a little bit better. I haven't even been known to cut them into thirds to throw them into the barrel. Where they fit in the barrel pretty nicely. Now from this point, right here. Folds that piece in. I heard that's called a wigwag, but not 100% sure. And we've got these little tabs that stick out back here. They usually hold the wire that goes down to the motor. So I try to cut them off. Now, these actually don't tear all the way down because, yeah, With that big plastic drum inside. I don't want to have to dispose of that. So I usually leave them pretty well intact. I'll get the motor off. The, uh, I have been asked why I don't take the transmission because it's good heavy. You could probably go into short iron prepared steel. But I have tried to take them off before. They were quite a job. Looks like this one's got aluminum motor, in, aluminum windings in it. But we'll get you over here and uh, show you what we got going here. Okay, so here we got the wires, it goes down there, and it's the wires there are connected to that wigwag, but there's a water line going to it yet. So what I usually do, grab the grab the wire cutters, side cutters, and I just kind of pull it up to, to me a little bit. It usually takes about two snips to get that. Get that rubber hose cut in half and clip the wires here, clip them there. Now these two black pieces right here, I'll put this in a vise and screwdriver pry these out and those two things are they're full of copper. And then I'll cut this right off the side of the motor here. I was going to do this last night and I thought, no, it's too hot, too humid. So I thought, oh, I'll get out here in the morning and do it. Yeah, that didn't happen either. I got up, drank some coffee, so it's too hot to go out there. Okay, now what we got. Not sure how well you can see it. I know I'm having a hard time seeing this monitor. Let me see if I can raise it up. I need to get me a new tripod. Let's 
So we got our water pump right here. I tell you, this little six eight inch pry bar right here, this thing works wonders. I, it's really handy. I use it a lot. Pry up on that, and then turn it sideways, and then that comes right out. And then get get up underneath. I think that one fell. Okay. Now, pry that away from it. Pry that away from the side. Gravity's trying to pull the motor to the side here. So then I usually just shove this out of the way. Now I got a strap right here. And then there's one underneath. And you can't see my hand. I'm going to back out a little ways here. And there's another strap, probably right about here, on the bottom side. So now, I'm going to give this ratchet a little shot of. Stubby. This is a little quarter inch drive of my stubby. Right here on the end, you got a quarter inch bolt. You got to just feel down there. It's kind of hard to see. So feel down there on the bottom one. Get your quarter inch ratchet on there. Okay, that one's out. And I'll show you how I discovered whether you can tell if the windings are copper or aluminum. Okay, those are out. Now I'll get my pry bar again. And well, I'm just going to do the top one right now. See that? I say twist it, and it comes out. Push that down. That releases the other one. And I pull this rubber piece off. Okay, I'm going to bring you back over here to the workbench. The old portable toolbox, anyway. And this zoom in here. Grab the little round file. Not sure if you guys are picking that up. Probably not, huh? You can kind of see the silver. So we know that's aluminum, which I knew it was anyway because this label right here, if it has kind of diagonal yellow lines on it, then I find that they're copper. So every time I see the yellow lines, they turn out to be copper. So that's something you guys can watch for on the wash machines. So if you don't want to mess with these aluminum windings, you know, you can just turn the wash machine upside down and look for those yellow stripes. Or if you want to double check, get a little file and file it. That the I used to take all these out and every now and then I'd run across one that was copper and I thought, okay, how can I tell the difference? So I got watching and I noticed the yellow stripes. Every time I had one with yellow stripes it was copper. 
And there's about three pounds, a little over three pounds of copper on one of those. So I usually turn them down anyway because you get quite a bit of cast cast aluminum. And ca a barrel full of cast aluminum usually has pretty good weight to it, so you can make pretty decent money. You know, but depends on how much time you got. You know, on how much you got a lot of time then on your hands, you want something to do, tear them down. Usually what I do, I'll hit it with a good heavy hammer, hit it here and here and just break it. And I'll try to break the little pieces off, throw them in the drum in the barrel. But uh, yeah, they're not too bad. But that's pretty much all I do to the to the wash machines. Just get that little bit of wire out of there, get this piece of aluminum, and then pull the motor. The transmission, yeah, you can pull those. But uh, I think they're more work than they're worth. You know, I think it's a lot. You make more money on this than you're going to make on that transmission. But you know, if you want to go that far, hey, you know, <laughs> you're your own boss. Yeah. The nice thing about scrapping, you're your own boss. You know what your time is worth. Nobody can, nobody should be able to tell you what your time is worth. You know, that's up to you. So, but I'm going to call it a video on that one. And I want to thank everybody for watching. I remind you guys about the Amazon affiliate link. There's lots of goodies, tools, consumables, you know, cutting discs and whatnot on there. Uh, Hit that if you're not new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, back up. Hit that subscribe button and looking at the monitor, I'm upside down. There we go. But yeah, hit that subscribe button. Mosquitoes flying around out here. And uh, hit that notification bell if you want to see the videos as, as they put them out. So thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.